This tutorial will cover how to make a weapon template. Like most people starting off, I used the ruler, protractor, reference picture, started measuring out distances, cutting, folding, and drawing again. A very painful and long process to follow. However, I figured out that I can use PowerPoint in order to create my templates. This tutorial will take you step by step on how to do that process. The first step will be to import your image into PowerPoint, making sure that you have your slide orientation set to portrait before doing this. The next step is to click on the picture format options that are located on the top toolbar. Step three is to click on the recolor toolbar option located on the bottom left of the toolbar. For step four, you will select the transparency tool located at the bottom of the recoloring tool option. For step five, once you've selected the transparency tool, select the background to remove it from your picture. For step six, we're going to select the cropping tool in order to resize the image so that the borders are as close as they can be to our reference picture. This is done to prepare our reference picture for resizing to the actual size we will use. In the upper right hand corner for step 7 we will adjust the height or the width. For my picture orientation and reference I need a 55 inch long sword so I will be changing the width to 55. For step 8 we're going to take our really large image now and move the top border of the image to the very top of our sheet. This is why it was important to crop the border of the image to as close as possible to the reference image itself. This can be tricky and frustrating. For step 9 we're going to right click on the sidebar image of our first slide and select duplicate slide. This will provide us the secondary image needed to start building our sword downward. For step 10, as you can see, I cropped the image down that was previously on the page. I meant to leave a little bit on the page, but after cropping you will move this image up so that it looks like the sword is continuing. For step 11, you can see what I was talking about in reference to cropping the image further down and moving it up. Now when you move it up, you want to make sure you're just using the arrows. Don't click and drag the image because you may get it off center. Although you can work around that, I prefer to keep it all centered as I work with it in the image. In step 12, you see I continue the procedure of cropping and moving the image up and duplicating the slide. On the left side uh, sidebar, you can see I've reduced the image that you, so that you can see the complete length of the reference sword that I am creating. Next, we're going to capture the parts of the reference picture that are extended beyond the page. I select the slide that has the portion extending beyond the page, and I do the cropping again, this time not cropping just up and down, but also to the left or the right to capture the side of the weapon that is sticking off of the page. For step 14, you can see that I finished cropping the pieces that were off and relocating them onto the final sheet. This is to reduce the amount of paper that I'm using when printing off this object. Don't forget to leave a little bit uh, more showing so that you can match these corners up nicely with the rest of the picture after you print and cut them out. For step 15, you're going to want to open up the properties for the printer, and under there, for the quality, set it to fast draft. This will reduce the amount of ink and time it takes your printer to print the pictures. And don't worry, the pictures will still be usable as reference pictures when you're doing your template. Step 16, we're almost there. I've changed the picture here to one that is shorter and Will be easier to work with now that we're past the hard part. You're going to want to lay the pictures out, make sure you've got them in the right order, and begin working on the next step, which is cutting them out. For step 17, you can see I started cutting the image out. 
I left some white space to the right where it's going to overlap. At this point, my kids uh, saw that I was doing this and, of course, wanted to help me, so I had little helpers cutting out the pictures. Step 18. Here you tape the seams that are overlapping. As for me, I continue to tape the whole reference piece because I know in my house the kids are going to play with it and I don't want it to be destroyed too quickly. For step 19, if you did decide to tape the whole reference piece like I did, as you're folding the flaps over the corners, make sure that you cut where you need to so that you can get a nice flat crisp edge on the reference piece. Now that it's fully taped, I'm doing a reference fit to see how well it fits compared to my son. If you like this video, please subscribe, share, and click like. I will be working on other videos as I turn this paper sword into an actual foam sword using gems that I'm working on, glowing gems, warbla, EVA foam, and other techniques that I have learned over the last two years. Thank you for watching and goodbye.